And this is lecture five of psychopharmacology, psychology 6700. I'm going to talk about depressive disorders. Now, depression is sort of the common cold of mental health. You'll, uh, in your career, see many, many uh, depressed clients. Some of the depressive diagnoses, of course, the best known, major depressive disorder or major depression. Uh, that's something that you see very commonly in an out, outpatient practice. Uh, other diagnoses, dysthymia, which is lower grade, longer term depression, uh, that used to be thought of as a characterological depression. Some people tend to have a depressive nature and uh, a low grade depression goes on um, sometimes throughout their whole life. Now, adjustment disorder with depressed mood is something you might also see, but uh, that's not classified under depressive disorders. It's classified under adjustment disorders. So that's something that uh, is generally time limited and in response to a uh, specific stressor. And the concept is that if it's an adjustment disorder, when the stressor is no longer there, an adjustment disorder resolves by itself in uh, a number of months. Now some of the other diagnoses that um, aren't considered necessarily treatable diagnoses include grief or uncomplicated bereavement uh, after someone suffers a, a major loss such as a death. Uh, it's perfectly normal for them to uh, grieve over that and that may need supportive therapy Generally, it's not thought of to, uh, as something that needs medication. And reactive dysphoria is normal sadness simply in response to circumstances. Uh, all of us have experienced that, um, a low grade at a te on a test or um, a setback at work might produce reactive dysphoria. And again, that's certainly not something that needs medical treatment. Uh, if someone does go in for therapy, it would probably be only supportive therapy, a uh, uh, shoulder to cry on. Now, diagnosing depression, uh, there is a series of steps to go through. First, you want to rule out medical problems. Uh, some medical problems that can cause depression include hypothyroidism, diabetes, AIDS, uh, but in general, you want to make sure that the person who is complaining of depression has had uh, a recent lab and physical and those systems have been checked. Uh, you should also consider legal and illegal drugs. Blood pressure medicines can cause uh, depression, so can overuse of alcohol and some hormones. You want to distinguish reactive versus endogenous depression. Uh, this is less of a concern than it used to be because either one might be treated with medication, but certainly if there are issues going on in the person's life that are causing depression, you want to be aware of that. You want to distinguish unipolar from bipolar depression. Uh, now this is a diagnosis that's easily missed because patients rarely come in when they're on the high side of bipolar illness, when they're manic because they're feeling good. So a lot of times someone will come in depressed and you want to get a good history from them and from their family to see if perhaps they cycle uh, into a manic state. And you also want to consider if psychotic features are present uh, because that would have treatment implications. The prescriber would probably add a, uh, an antipsychotic drug. The core symptoms that you see in all depressions include sadness, loss of pleasure, apathy, touchiness, pessimism, irritability, and suicidal thoughts. Low self-esteem you see in depression, but not in grief. So you ask a question like, uh, do you have feelings of worthlessness? Do you sometimes feel you aren't as good as other people? And if it's depression and not grief, um, you'll get an affirmative answer. Physiological symptoms, and uh, these are keys that the patient is likely to respond well to antidepressant medication. Appetite disturbance, either increased or decreased. Fatigue, decreased libido, 
uh, a good way to ask about that. You, you ask, uh, is your appetite any different? And then you can ask, that, and how about your appetite for sex? Has that changed? Psychomotor activity, either an increase in activity or lethargy. Consistent pattern, they uh, feel depressed at certain times of the day. Concentration problems, anhedonia or loss of pleasure, and sleep disturbance. The basic theory behind depressive illness is the uh, monoamine hypothesis that it's caused by not enough norepinephrine, serotonin, or dopamine. Classes of antidepressants, the cyclical antidepressants, such as Elevil, also known as amitriptyline, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. These are the most common class now, usually the first line, such as Prozac. Serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, Effexor is an example of that. Monoamine oxidase uh, inhibitors, or MAOIs, uh, are a class that's not as common because they have side effects with certain foods, uh, but this is a medication like Nardil, and then atypical, such as Welbutrin. Choosing an antidepressant, um, it's not terribly scientific, uh, you base it on what the person responded to well before, and you also base it on the side effect profile. Uh, certain antidepressants cause anxiety, sedation, insomnia, nausea, sexual dysfunction, and weight gain. So if any of those are issues for the client, if they're overweight or if they've had problems with sexual dysfunction, you'd choose a medication that uh, tends not to have that particular side effect.